Well, we had three different meetings today. Maybe to celebrate that it was our first physical encounter since last August, almost soon it will be one year, we decided to hold three different meetings. We started with the steering board of the European Defense Agency in order to have uh, the defense ministers the possibility to review the state of play of the implementation of the coordinated annual review on defense, what we call CART. To have a look at the recommendations of CART, looking in particular at uh, collaborative opportunities in capability development, research, and technology, which are the basis of the strategic autonomy in the field of defense. And certainly, we have a lot of work to do. We have a clear picture of uh, this capability development based on research and technology, but we are very much aware that uh, it takes 10 to 30 years to fully design, to develop, and to put in the field a usable major military system. This means that we need to take decisions and engage now. The discussion has been interesting, but uh, there is a lot of work to do in order to go from the theoretical approaches to the practical implementations. Then we went to the everyday business. And on that, Sahel took an important place. I briefed defense ministers on my re recent trip to the Sahel. As you already know, I visited Mauritania, Mali, and Chad. The travel was the program of the travel was uh, strongly altered and had to be adapted to the fact that the president of Chad was killed. The region is facing uh, one of the most important security and development crises of our generation. After I came back, a lot of moments with the killing of soldiers and civilians. And I think that uh, we have to increase our engagement in the region because the stability in the Sahel remains key for the European security. We went to discuss Russia, the Russia recent built up in the illegally annexed Crimea and on the Ukraine border. We discussed about the de-escalation of the tensions and the implementation of Minsk agreement as the only way forward for a lasting political solution. But uh, it's unclear that Russia wants to engage fully in this respect. And unclear is a mild word. But Mozambique. Mozambique is a, a new issue that more and more appears in our agenda. I updated ministers on our response to Mozambique's request for the European Union assistance to help to address the security situation and the territorial threat they are facing in the region of Cabo Delgado. Work is already ongoing. We are considering a potential European Union tra training mission, like the one that we already have in several African countries. We have a few steps ahead of us, but I hope it will be launched as soon as possible. I am giving instructions to the services to accelerate work because we must respond to the Mozambique request with a certain sense of urgency that uh, we would not always have. The main dish of our meeting was a strategic compass. It was the most important item in our agenda. And today we were focusing on one of the baskets of this strategic compass, the basket of crisis management. Threat analysis, crisis management. This analysis that we produced last year shows that we need to be prepared for future crisis and to react quickly. To this end, we have put forward a number of concrete ideas and proposals. Many of them are based on inputs received from the member states themselves. We want to do that 
on an interactive way. At the end, the member states, which are the responsible for the competent, for the foreign and defense policy, have to provide with their proposals, their inputs, their analysis. We got a lot of papers, and putting all of them together, we have produced our own proposal that the ministers have been discussing. Allow me to summarize the main guidelines of this proposal. First, the European Union needs to be more effective and take decision faster. As I said before, we have to react quicker. We need to take decision faster. And we discuss notably how to launch our missions and operations more quickly, how we could create more incentive to improve the number of personnel and staff and assets deployed under our CSDP missions and operations. Second, we need more flexibility. That's what I learned during my visits to the missions that we are deploying recently in the Sahel. We need to better adapt our civilian and military missions to the needs of each crisis, and each crisis is different from the others. This could also mean more coordination and cooperation with other military operations conducted in ad hoc coalition by some member states or other partners. In Sahel, for example, there are the EU missions, and then there are coalitions ad hoc led by some member states. We have to converge these uh, European Union activity with the member state activities. More coordination and cooperation. Third, we need to be better prepared. I want to raise the level of our ambition. And what I am saying to be better prepared is not just a matter of speed, but it's also a matter of having fully equipped and prepared our staff to react quickly. And in this context, we discussed the idea that was present in some of the papers presented by several member states, but also in our own reflection, the idea of an initial entry force that could be deployed as a first responder in case that we have to face an urgent crisis. This is just one example of the proposal that could be considered by member states as part of the ongoing reflection on the strategic compass that I hope will be finished by next March. By the time being, nothing is cast in stone. There is no agreement on any specific issue. There is a, uh, there is a battle of ideas. It is a, a reflection, a collective reflection. There is a strong agreement on some issues. Uh, the debate is going on in others. But this idea of an initial entry force has been uh, widely discussed today. For member states' forces to be ready for future crisis and conflict, we also need to plan an exercise together by using scenarios not only to determine what we need, but also to train together and improve our planning and conduct structures. Here also, I want to be more ambitious. If we want to have the capability of deploying on the field, we must have at the headquarters planning, conduct structures that by the time being we don't have. In the weeks to come, the ministers will have uh, substantive discussions also on the other baskets or directions, the components of the compass, capabilities, emerging and disruptive technologies, partnerships, and resilience. Some member states were asking about our partnership with NATO. The partnership with NATO is uh, something that uh, I give it for granted. It will be everywhere, but it has a specific part when we talk about partnership. And our partnership with NATO is the most important one that we have. And in order to enhance this partnership, we invited to lunch with us the NATO Secretary General that uh, join us on an informal lunch, and we discuss areas of common interest from Mediterranean to Afghanistan. And as you can imagine, the situation in Afghanistan has been the most, uh, the most important issue we have been talking with, uh, with Jen, with the Secretary General of NATO. 
in light of the US and NATO decision to withdraw forces as for the 1st of May, increase communication and coordination between us, NATO and US and other international partners will be key to ensuring a stable and long-term political solution in Afghanistan. Everybody understands that there is a big risk of uh, increased violence. We want to encourage the peace process to support the prosperity, security, democracy, and human rights in the country. But uh, let's see the events the way they will unfold. Mediterranean is the other area in our immediate neighborhood. And there, there are still pending issues um, like, for example, the cooperation between our operations, NATO and EU, IRINI and Sea Guardian. Uh, we ask the Secretary General of NATO to continue working in order to have the same cooperation with uh, IRINI that we had with the previous Operation Sophia. And finally, we had the board at the ministerial level of the satellite center based in Torrejón on the outskirts of Madrid. It is the, the first time in almost 30 years, 30, not 13, 30 years, that the board of the European Union satellite center meets at a political level. And I had the honor and the pleasure to chair this meeting. For me, satellite center is a very important asset for our institutions and agencies for member states, for our missions and operations, because it provides us with a critical geopolitical intelligence analysis. It also provides uh, to our partners, uh, such as OCE, Ukraine, or the United Nations in Libya, with an invaluable view of what's happening on the ground. The ministers adopted the participation of Canada, Norway, and the US in the first PESCO project shared with uh, non-member states. Finally, we have non-member states participating in PESCO project, in particular on this one of military mobility in the European continent, in which, for sure, the US and Norway is also interested in Canada. I think it's an important step for PESCO. We have been discussing about it for a month, but finally, our CSDP cooperation with partners in the area of defense and for European and transatlantic security has grown one step further. Good news. Thank you very much. And now we have the, the time for just a couple of questions. And I give the floor to Robin.